interesting. Right. That bit. Get that bit. Now I can play over the top. And when I don't drop my plectrum. My name's Alice Hutchings and um, over the years, I, I guess I would describe myself as a, as a professional guitarist. I've taught and played in lots of bands. I live in Moscow. Uh, I have, uh, you know, online material, teaching material. Um, and uh, I work with various music companies as well. So some of which, uh, the guys from Laney Amps, I work with Roland and Boss, uh, l looking at kind of guitar pedals and effects and stuff. And, um, and also I've been working with Tom Waghorn uh, to build these amazing guitars. I'm Tom Waghorn, I'm from Waghorn Guitars. I make entirely bespoke custom made guitars. The idea being that, you know, the customer can have their dream guitar, something that they can't buy from the shelf, and whatever their design, um, whatever they feel they want on the instrument, you know, we, we, can, we can do that um, within reason. I got a job in a, in a music shop. It was a day that I took some repairs to our local repair guy and went to his workshop with a, with a handful of instruments and I just thought, wow, this is it. You know, this is, this is what I want to do. I went there one day with, a, with, with nothing to do and he said, well, how do you feel about making something? I went and um, spoke to Tom and just said, look, would you be up for attempting to make my dream guitar? And if you do, then, you know, I'd love to play them. 10 years on or more, uh, we've built five guitars and also, um, uh, you know, a bunch of people around the world have ordered them also. I felt pretty confident that he'd, he'd make something pretty special and, um, and he's made a lot of special things. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, and I have since played these guitars on all my gigs, um, you know, around the world and um, they've served me very well. Um, and I never thought in my life that I'd actually build anything. Typically, I would do something like a neck through. Um, and a neck through is, if we look at this guitar, for example, is where the neck actually runs right through the body. We do an awful lot of neck through guitars. Structurally, it's more sound, it's, it's very strong. We had something called a half-through design, which means rather than bolted with bolts, it's, it's glued um, and, and that makes it much stronger as well. So that's a really good feature. And as I mentioned earlier about flying around the world, trust me, even in a flight case, people throw them around and do not you know, take care of things. So the stronger it is, the better, you know. Here we go, here's one sort of glued up. Something like this one, uh, I've routed basically the channels for the truss rod and we quite often put carbon fibre reinforcements in. Actually much like these ones behind me, where the truss rod is actually glued in under a little piece of ebony there. Once the neck is made, the next stage really is for us to get the body wings attached to the bottom of the neck, uh, very much like this. This is more of my go-to at the moment. Um, this one we called the Nouveau guitar. Uh, it's got these various cutaways, which are very comfortable and practical. The reason for them is actually practical. So if I'm stretching, you see I have full access. So that's one of those features that, um, you know, when we were looking at that, it was really important to me because a, a traditional Telecaster, the, the horn might be here and I, I bang my hand, you know. This one has its body wings glued on already. 
um, and I've cut out the shape roughly. The next stage for this one would be to have the top fitted. Um, this is a, a burr maple top. That will be glued on as soon as that's fitted. Um, that's the next step. Um, once that's done, you can start routing in the pickup cavities and, and the electronics cavities, get the fingerboard on. Um, and then it starts to look very much more like a guitar. I actually have another one, which I can show you, where the top has been glued on. Um, this one I've gone as far as actually routing the pickup cavities into it. Um, the next step for this one is actually to glue the fingerboard on. Here's one which I've made, slotted myself and put this uh, binding around the edge. So that will, once finished, be glued on to here. This is uh, um, the most recent AH6, which is also cool. Um, and a bit nuts, so I asked to go crazy on this and have the red finger do it. I wanted to kind of go metal, if you know what I mean. I wanted to go rock heavy. I said, sorry, that's far too loud. Why is it doing that? Okay, is that blowing out the mics? So again, it's pretty much an, just a regular A86, but um, in blood red, as we called it. Um, yeah, and I just think it looks pretty cool, pretty rad. The tour I mentioned earlier, I took it around in its sort of previous state where it was a uh, natural wood colour. But um, in the end, we decided to refinish it, give it a completely new look, and uh, that this is the result. So, yeah, pretty happy with that. And uh, when I released a video of this online, people were like, whoa, look at that fretboard. I've, I've actually never seen uh, a red one before. So this one, uh, as you can see, I've glued the fingerboard on. This one's actually having block inlay, so sort of pearl, pearl rectangular blocks in the in the fret positions. I've marked out the electronics on the controls. Um, hopefully, you can see that where they're going to go. This one actually has a carved top, a bit like a sort of Gibson Les Paul. So this was the first one after the prototype we built, and. Uh, there's a walnut top and um, this lovely feature here where as you do what's called a drop top uh, for, for comfort, there's a binding here. I think that's maple and then the top is, is walnut. And then as this this drop top was cut, it reveals the, the base wood and this binding, which just is a lovely feature, um, sort of a byproduct of the comfort uh, drop top there. This is quilted maple. Um, it has a very, very strong 3D effect. If I just actually put some water on it, you can just see the, the figure popping out. Um, it's sort of imitating how it would look with a finish. When I asked Tom to, to colour this one, the brief was, when I see it, I'd like to be able to dive into it. And that was the point. So it's like a Maldivian sea. You just really see the strength of the figure in that and how that's going to look with the, with the finish on it. He did something that was very technical where I believe he sort of had to steam and bend the wood in order that it didn't cut away like this one, do you see what I mean? Because whilst that's kind of cool, I felt like it would be nice to just have it all the water colour, if you will. So I do believe that's a very technical thing to do, and uh, he, he did that extremely well. I don't have the batteries in, but this also features some crazy lights. So in the neck, um, there's some, each one of these light up, which is uh, absolutely unnecessary, but just kind of fun. <laughs> this uh, funny looking greenhouse in the middle of the workshop is actually my spray booth. Um, so this is where all the, the magic happens, so all the all the colours and the fancy gloss finishes. So this one, we've it's actually gone through the finishing stages. Um, we've given it like a sort of charcoal black dye um, and I've worn it off in places so it looks sort of aged and antiqued. Um, but this one is ready for its part, so electronics, machine heads, and then I can start setting it up, putting the strings on, which is the exciting part. 
So this uh, is an extended eighth string. It goes down to low F sharp. So it's almost a bass. He mentioned that he was building an eight string for somebody. And I said, oh, you can build an eight string. He said, yeah, I can build any string you want. And I said, please, could you build an eight string as well? And what's cool is these are what they call sister necks. So this is exactly the same pieces of wood that was used for that, that guitar. Um, so um, it's hard to see now, but this piece of wood and this piece of wood are exactly the same. So they're kind of forever related, which is cool. And I also believe there's someone out there that has the other off cut on their neck. So I need to find out who that is. I think they're in America and tell them, just so you know, uh, you're part of the family. Yeah, so this one is ready for its parts. Um, We've got things like pickups, a humbucker for the bridge pickup here that will fit in nicely in there. The guys at DiMarzio made this for me especially because they didn't have a, a silver plated Telecaster pickup and just for the aesthetic it looks a little more traditional so if it was black it, it wouldn't feel as uh, authentic you know so that was a nice touch and, and I'm really appreciative that they sent me that. Um, and the selection switches are in a position that really suits me, you know. Um, this is just a simple three-way, one, two, and three. Um, this is a, a switch that makes them single coil. A little bit more um, telly sounding, and then... Um, and that's a, a warmer kind of pickup. Bridge. It's a tremolo, so here's the, the bar that will fit into there. Um, that will fit into this cavity here. There's a, a special pickup in here which allows you to use um, and control MIDI instruments. Um, I won't get into the technicalities of that, but essentially it uh, picks up the signal from the individual strings and allows you to manipulate them with certain pedals and stuff, which is really cool. Also got the machine heads, which are pretty cool. Those will obviously fit on the headstock here. The switch, um, the pots, all of this stuff will be fitted inside. I play in a different tuning to regular um, guitars, which is called fourth tuning. I said, um, could you extend the fretboard to enable me to get the open strings in standard tuning and actually, but allow me to play in fourth tuning for the rest of the neck? And he was like, uh, yeah, I think so. I said, please, can you build it? You've got like five months <laughs> before I go on tour. So that becomes then my tuning. So the whole instrument is technically tuned in my tuning, but if I needed to play some um, pieces of music with open strings, I was able to, to do that. It made it work, and so that's an incredibly unique thing. I don't even know if that exists anywhere in the world, so really cool thing. This one has what you call a sunburst top. And the way we achieve that is you actually dye the wood this amber colour. Once that's done, you put the sort of sealer coats over the top, and then you add the actual bursting around the edge in the sort of final lacquer coats. Hey. He survived to tell the tale. How stressful was that? Come on, boy. Are you okay? You hurt? You okay? Give me a kiss. All right, get down on there. We're gonna have to clean you up. You. Hey, how are you doing? Where do you want to go now? You've discovered there's a whole world out there, that's the problem. Oh dear. My nice fresh shirt. Brilliant. Rascal. Good. You know, being expressive and creative within uh, the building context is definitely something that um, I get from Tom. I think that he gets a great deal of satisfaction from the ergonomics of whether it be the shape or 
Um, he does some incredible inlays, fret inlays. I've seen him like do a dragon and things like this. I'm not sure if you've seen. There's Jupiter in the middle there, I actually hand painted. So I used um, Tahitian black pearl for most of the feathers and the wings. Do you see these inlays here and on the side? Uh, black, red. I was saying, oh, it would be really cool to have black and red. And he's like, well, I've got black uh, color, but I don't know if I'm going to have any red. And uh, then we found that he had a, a toothbrush that he used to clean, like just an old one to clean things. And I said, that's exactly the color. So he, he used half the toothbrush and that is actually his Tesco toothbrush. <laughs> so the plastic inlays there. So there's a bit of inside information. It's not always the most sort of lucrative uh, of things. I mean, it can be, but the problem is, as a kind of a one-man show, as it were, um, it's very difficult to um, produce guitars at a rate, let's say, a company would with machines. You know, obviously, uh, when you buy guitars off the shelf, as it were, there are huge machines that just chop them auto automatically, spray a bit of paint on, and away you go. But Tom very carefully and lovingly, you know, sands every bit of wood himself. Uh, he takes pride in, in what he's doing. And, um, and I think that's just something about his character, you know. I mean, I actually build my guitars over months and months. Um, if, I, if I was just working on one guitar, I, I expect I could probably do it in around about six weeks. Um, but usually I'm working on guitars for longer than six months at a time. Just his desire to want to do it so well, which um, in, in a way gets him into trouble. It, it's not an easy business, for sure. Um, the quality of the instruments have to be up there with, with the best, as far as I'm concerned. Um, the finishing and the playability has to be as good as anything you can buy off the shelf, if not better. I hope it's not like a dying art, but I, I think the difficulty is in simply the revenue, to bring in the revenue to um, to keep it alive, you know? And he, like we mentioned earlier, his, his passion and determination is something that um, keeps him going and it would be wonderful to think that uh, maybe anyone seeing this would appreciate what goes into making these lovely instruments and to uh, get into it as well. Maybe go and join him on the quest, you know? I'm sure he'd appreciate it too. So you see the Tom's guitar.